So my goal is to uh, have um, um, this recorded and then later transcribed and it's going to go in the archives of the California History Center and also the archives of the Japanese American Museum of San Jose. So I um, promote the study of local history. So documents like this are really, really important. Uh, <coughs> I was a member of Yokohama, California. Um, and we can talk more about that later, but um, uh, we all uh, had a good time and we're the second Asian American group uh, to produce a record album in the 70s. Uh, and uh, let's see, I was also involved in Asian American Studies at UC Berkeley, uh, along with PJ, that she likes to re remind me of. And uh, we, we had some uh, very meaningful things going on back then. Um, we also started getting involved in community work, uh, specifically with the Issei in the East Bay Area, and Roy and PJ and I were amongst the founding members of a group that later became known as the East Bay Japanese for Action. Um, my family, when I was two, moved from San Jose to Los Gatos, which would be a more affluent kind of um, living community, uh, mostly white. And uh, the story that our family kind of grows up with is the fact that when we tried to move there, when my parents tried to buy the house um, back there in, what, 1960 or so, um, the neighbors all petitioned the realtor not to sell the home to our, our Japanese family. Um, I never had a very, very clear sense of what Japanese American identity was, so I never was in my body or my skin uh, until much later in life. And um, what drew me, well, I, I went to UC Berkeley and graduated from there, um, where Peter says that <laughs> we met there. Asian American Studies was very, very prominent, um, had prominent impact on where I was to go in terms of community organizing and my place in how I connect with community, Japanese American community. So I was still searching, and I had to go to Japan to think that's where my people were, only to find that, oh, they're, I'm not their people. <laughs> and, and trying to resettle back here, and actually it was Roy that told me about a possible job um, in 1974 um, that actually brought me to San Jose. And it was my introduction to San Jose Japantown, a Japanese American community. It was my introduction to becoming a charter member of the forming San Jose Taiko. Hi, my name's Roy Hidabayashi. So PJ and I are married, a um, couple. Yeah. <laughs> Just to be clear, some people think we're brothers and sisters. <laughs> We are within the soul respect, I guess. <laughs> uh, I was born in Berkeley, raised in Oakland, and I like to be specific, East Oakland, basically. Uh, so I spent up through my high school years in Oakland, which was at that time, um, you know, in the 50s and 60s, kind of a tough neighborhood area. A lot of things going on. The Black Panther Party was organizing. And, um, that was when the Civil Rights Education Act went through in 64, so there was a lot of busing going on, which I was part of when going to high school. and. Uh, so that whole scene, uh, being uh, identity of being Japanese and Japanese American is really kind of obvious to me in a way. Uh, you know, music was always part of my interests. Uh, Reverend Hiroshi Abiko uh, wanted to start something at the Buddhist temple to try to get the youth involved. So that's how we began the South Asian Taiko group with uh, Reverend Hiroshi Abiko and Dean Yakusa and myself. Um, we began that and talking about that in 1973 and got that going at that point. And that has been the change point for me, I guess, in my life, basically. Um, kind of stayed with Tycho all ever since then. Quite frankly, when we were kids and we would hear Japanese music and singing, uh, we would laugh at it, because we, we didn't know. I mean, we didn't speak Japanese, and it was kind of like odd you know, to our ears. And then for the first year I was at San Jose State, I went to this concert in San Francisco with Stomu Yamashita. Mm. And uh, his group was, I think it was called Red Buddha Theater. Right. And 
he had keyboard, drums, guitar, bass, koto, shamisen, fue, and he was probably one of the first to do this crossover type of music. Completely blew me away. I mean, I thought, wow, you know, maybe there is something there. Even before we, Sensei Taiko, went up to study with San Francisco, uh, the group had to create a sound. And how that happened is, uh, I think Russell Baba recorded us live performing, uh, and that totally impressed uh, Mr. Tanaka uh, that he that this group was playing without any training, and he really thought it was great. And so that's how it sounds like Taiko got invited to to study at his dojo. I'm Japanese, uh, but my grandma was born in Hawaii, as I say. Uh, but uh, I was born and raised in Japan, so I'm not the Yonsei, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, some people in Japan told me, I, and uh, Minoru, you are a wannabe Japanese American. No, no I'm, not, I'm not. I'm Japanese American in Japan. Mm -hmm. You know, this is my joke. <laughs> <laughs> Is anybody home? Is anybody home?